Alrighty, class zero six. Um, today's mostly just going to be you guys working. I'm just going to give a couple of content creation tips. Uh, actually, I'm going to skip all the way down here to this. Your next part of your assignment uh, for your business site is to create the content. Um, you should have the basic site uh, laid out, you know. Um, but uh, right now what you have is placeholder stuff. Uh, what I want you to do is actually put... Um, the the real content in okay so it means real text uh real images such and such okay but you're not allowed to use anything that's not yours to use okay so that means uh you got to write out your text which probably isn't gonna be that big of a deal just type out what makes sense uh for whatever your business is uh but the images you have to produce meaning if you want to have like icons or um, any kind of uh, graphics, you need to create those either in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever software you feel comfortable in. Um, and if you need photos, you have to take those as well. OK. Or you have to have access to those. Like if you have a friend that's a photographer, that's OK. But as long as you have the rights to use them, because um, that's something you've got to get used to doing. All right. So no more using stuff you find on the Internet. You have to make your own materials. Now, if that is, let's say your your business is uh, creating cereal, um, then uh, then you need to make a, like a mock cereal box and take a picture of it, or make it in Illustrator or something like that. Um, it's up to uh, to you to create that content. Okay, so that's basically what you're going to be doing this week is you're going to need to make that stuff. So even in class, when you come in, you probably don't need to. You can probably just leave and go to start working on that. All right. So I'm just giving some content tips here. Um, so obviously, if you're a web designer, your primary job is making um, the uh, the website. But that being said, as companies are smaller, uh, you know, as businesses get kind of um, smaller and things like that, you'll find that you often have to wear multiple hats. And one of the hats you might need to wear or something that might be a benefit is if you have the ability to help create the content so that you could take the photos. Let's say it's a restaurant of their food items right or uh, you can create their logo things like that um, you know it'd be, it'd be good if you were well-rounded in that regard so um, so here are just some basic tips um, first off when you write out your text use like Microsoft Word or some other text editing software that will actually look at the grammar and spelling mistakes and things like that don't just type directly into WordPress because uh, it will I think do some but you're kind of taking a risk it, it won't It'll probably find misspellings for the most part, but it won't find, um, you know, like run on sentences or oddities like that. Um, try to keep the information succinct. People don't like large amounts of text. Uh, some of you guys in the past have created like multiple paragraphs of information. You want like one to two sentences in a paragraph and that's it. People will not, uh, especially if they're on a phone, it'll take up the entirety of the phone. People won't read those unless it's like some sort of article about, Ben Affleck's chin or something that's like, you know, celebs best chins um, that people read those stupid things. Most of the time, people do not want large amounts of text. Um, you should generally have two fonts. You should have a heading font. Uh, so like your titles. Right. And you should have body font. Um, so obviously the heading font is your more interesting font. You can kind of, you know, get frilly with that. But the other the body text should be simple, sweet and easy to read and large amounts of text. Um, you can use Google fonts to find your text, um, but also it'll give you a sample. So if you go to um, fonts.google, you can also just click on this link here. You can choose your fonts and then it will give you. So like I selected which one? OK, popular with stat liches. Um, it says open sands, uh, railway, but you can click on each one of these and it will show you the heading font and the body font with it. And you can go the other way as well. Um, but that way you can kind of see like, OK, these work together. Because personally, I have a hard time finding fonts or choosing the correct ones. Um, that's a nice little tool that will help you with it. So photography tips. Um, first off, use a DSLR, right? So that's the fancy one that has like the big old lens on the front. Some of these uh, phone cameras are pretty nice. If you got a really nice one and you feel comfortable with it, you can use that. But if you do have the option, you know, obviously using a professional camera is just going to give you a more professional photo. Uh, professional lighting is preferred. Uh, we do have the studio. Uh, it, you know, at Cecil that you can utilize, but if you're not a photographer, which some of you aren't, some of you are, uh, you can utilize those. Uh, but if first comes to worst, outdoor lighting works really well. 
uh, because it's it's generally warmer. Uh, it's going or the the color temperature is going to be nicer, and it's usually really bright. So um, you'll you'll know that it'll be well lit, and it, the camera will have an easier time taking a good quality image. Um, try to maintain consistency in your images. So take photos at the same angles and orientation, um, same lighting, same environment. Again, let's use the restaurant as an example. If you're taking photos of their food dishes, you should do them all from the same, like three quarters, bird's eye down in the same room, you know what I mean, in the same environment uh, with the same lighting. So that way when you have them, uh, they'll all match, right? It'll have a nice unity to it. If they're wildly different, then it's just going to be all over the place and it's going to look very haphazard. Um, if you are using multiple images and you do not have um, control over some of that aspect and they're in close proximity to each other, meaning like on the page, you could try desaturating, tinting, or using some other general adjustments. So if you look at here, I have these um, four photos from when I was at Harvard. Um, and you can see they're very different, right? So you got like green versus this red and this kind of white, whatever. But if I take them all and I just do a general tint to them, you can see now they match generally, right? So I mean, they, they could match a little bit better, but considering how wildly different they are, just by tinting them all the same the same amount, or you could desaturate them all, or you could add like a kind of an opaqueness to them, um, that will help them uh, line up, okay? So if you're trying to uh, pull more unity, if you see your site's getting too disparate, uh, that's one of the things you can do. Um, so graphic tips. Um, generally, keep them simple, keep them clean. Um, try and maintain the color scheme that you're using for everything else. So if you have a, a, a logo or something, make the logo the same as your site's um, color scheme or vice versa. If you already have the logo, then make the site match that. Um, take hints from the ch font choice. So, uh, you know, if you have a really like a cursive -y font, this one's not. But if you were using like a handwritten font, um, you know, you might be able to get like your graphics could be a little bit more like uh, a little more human. They could be kind of written squiggly. Um, if you got something that's real like strong and blocky, then you probably want to make really blocky um, graphics. Um, you can also uh, utilize uh, Font Awesome. You click on it here, and you'll see. Not already well. Yeah, you can click on here, and then you can um, use these Font Awesomes as well. Uh, see here. Um, the nice thing with these is that these have like those standard icons that everybody knows that they accept. Uh, if you don't want to use this, you can still look for them here, and then just remake the, the graphic yourself and you know just host the picture yourself but that way you can see like a lot of sites use these none of these ones in particular um and so they'll they'll understand what these mean because it's a universal language all right so uh yeah that's that now some divi tips um one thing you can do is once you've made an element um or a layout or a row or whatever every one of them you can press on this little save to um, library button and what it'll do is it'll allow you to save it to the library, and then you can use that same thing again. So, for instance, um, let's say I take this guy and I do a sepia tone on him, right? I could hit OK. And then afterwards, I can go like this, and I could say, like, you know, um, tint or image tint, tint, okay? And then I'll save to library. Well, I probably should put a category in it. But anyways, I'll do that. Then, if I want to put in another... If I want to put in another element, and I could say, oh, add from library. Got to wait a second. Image tint. Boom. It'll put that in there, but I can replace this picture, but that way they'll have the same tint applied to both of them. Um, so if you have like some port, sort of pre-formatting, and you can do that for everything. So like that's on a module. You can do it for um, uh, a section, uh, a row. You can click on here. Um, Oops, not there, sorry. I gotta hover over. Here we go. You can save the, the row. You can also save um, a section, yeah, right here. And you can even save um, the, you know, like basically a whole page, a template, right? So if you have like, you know, let's say you have multi, like let's say you have team members and you have like a certain layout for each one of them where it has like a photo and blah, 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 blah. You could save that layout and then for each team member just replace the information that's in there. So that's kind of useful as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, topography. You should try and keep the. Um, uh, you should you should set up the default uh, heading and uh, body fonts. So if you just go, you got to be in the dashboard. Uh, we will discard and exit. You have to be in the dashboard. But if you go to Divi, theme customizer, it's going to bring up um, uh, this little menu eventually. Okay. 
which is you probably remember normally you have that little customize button on the top there but when you're using the divi theme like or in the divi builder that doesn't show up you have to do it through the um the uh dashboard anyway um so uh, all you gotta do is go to general settings topography and then you can choose your fonts here see there's all these busyness and then you can change the sizes and stuff up here go away we'll save that one okay it's alien now um and you can change the colors and all this other stuff right in here which is really nice um you can also not that one you can also uh adjust your nav bar so again if you go back let's go back to the beginning go here um you go to um header format and then right here it says header style um, you can see right now it's got this over here. It's got the default, so it's got the logo and that. But you can see there's different ones. There's centered, which has got the logo like that. Uh, centered inline o logo. Uh, slide in. This one's kind of neat, so you hit this, it slides over. Um, and then they have a full one too. Watch. Same thing, but watch. Whoop. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, you can hide the navigation until you scroll, right? So I could, well, it's not, I can't really scroll right now, but it, it'll only pop up when I go move up to it. Um, so that's another thing you could do, which is useful. Uh, there's a bunch of different options there. Uh, let me see. Okay, so then we'll just go with the images here. So I'm going to exit out of this and hit OK. And then I'm going to go to Pages. And let's just go back to the About one. Okay. Edit with the builder so inside of here i already did it earlier you already saw me do it um but remember before i was saying like if you want to make images match it's a good idea to basically um edit them so that they are kind of the same you know like do a tint or to saturate or something like that there's actually um the there's css3 rule so you can select the Im uh the image hit the little gear to bring up the settings or cog um and then if you go to design and you'll see filters you can shift the hue here and then, oops, stay on page. Never asked you to do that. Um, but I don't know if you can see it. It's shifting there, which is fine. You can also add a sepia tone, right? So you can add that to a bunch of things. You can invert it, which I don't know why you'd want to. Um, take the contrast down or up. Um, you could just generally just saturate the thing. Uh, and then that will help your images uh, match. Let's just do zero here. Uh, but basically, these are, are CSS3 um, attributes. But this will help uh, rules. But these will help um, match your images if you have a bunch of them. Or obviously, there's only one here, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you had more, it's a good way of making them kind of match up. All right. Um, so, yeah. Basically, I want you to do is create all of your content for your um, stuff. And that is it. So, good luck.